Welcome inside the State Champs studios on the campus of Lawrence Technological University. This is State Champs Hockey Time. I'm Jonathan Kidd along with Sean Belizean. Sean, that is an awesome hoodie that we got now. Oh my gosh, thank you. This is awesome. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Alta. And we appreciate you being a part of, of everything that it makes high school hockey so fantastic. As always, State Champs Hockey Time is presented by the Alta Equipment Company. On Wednesday, we're going to have a Game Time Live broadcast between Riverview, Gabriel Shard, and Chelsea in the Division Three Hockey Quarterfinal. Beautiful. Let's go. And a beautiful ring. I mean, two teams looking to punch their ticket to USA Hockey Arena. So I, I can't wait, John. All right. So that's Wednesday at 5 p.m. You can watch the game on our YouTube and on our Facebook page. Sean, you know, the regionals just completed this weekend. Just your thoughts in Division One. Well, you know what? I, I think if you look at Division One, uh, you and I did very well. Right? We have to point that out. Listen, let, can, let me. we're always told when we're wrong. John and I hear it all the time when we're wrong. So can you indulge us a little bit ab about, John? Well, the total, we were 21-3 and three in our regional picks in all three divisions. So, sorry. Come on. Come on. If you guys are always going to yell at us when we're wrong, I hear that more than anything, John. So a little bit of love there. We did well, all right. Well, you know what's going to happen. You know, we're going to get oh, Raz for the ones get, that we that we oh, did, did get it right. That means that we're going to bomb now because for the first time we can actually talk it up. But, no, I mean, uh, Saginaw Heritage, you knew that they'd get right. I, I think the schedule that they play is conducive to, to getting them battle-tested uh, for the playoff. The story in Division One is Detroit Catholic Central. And why is it? the story uh, if in case you didn't know they had to roll with their JV team two games in a row that is just awesome congratulations to one of the, every one of those kids your legends now whether you want to accept it or not every one of you guys are legends uh, for doing that and and it wasn't easy but they were able to to get through and, and weather the storm and you know props to, to coach Cal and, and his staff for doing it but Everything starts with those kids, and those kids are legends, so it looks good on all of you. And we're going to now preview the Division I quarterfinals that's going to be happening on Wednesday. Your thoughts on the game between Mid-Michigan and Saginaw Heritage? Well, you know what? Mid-Michigan, we, we both had them going there, but Saginaw Heritage, the been there, the done that, the schedule that they play, I hate to sound like a broken record, but they've made me look smart, and that's not an easy thing to do. I'm going with Saginaw Heritage. All right, and on the west side of the state, we have Rockford taking on Granville. This is so intriguing to me because, um, you know, you have Joel Brazil, one, one of the best guys out there, just a, a, a good dude. And the Rams have, have, have really taken some steps in the in the last few years. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. But you know what? I'm going to take the Rams by a goal. All right, on Wednesday at the Dearborn Ice Skating Center, we have Detroit Catholic Central taking on Salem. Salem coming off that overtime win over Plymouth. Ryan Ossenmacher has done such a tremendous job. That is a young Salem team. Team and he's weathered some storms there. He's going to have to have the game of his lifetime, though, because you know these CC kids are going to want to go out there and fly uh, for the JV kids that had to take their place the last couple days. In our last quarterfinal in Division One, we got it's Brighton again. They're in the quarterfinals. They're taking on Lake Orion, the you know the sleeper in Division One. Yeah, they are. Lake Orion's a team that you know we had them ranked a couple weeks ago, uh, and for a reason. Brighton has been in playoff mode for a month. I, I, I know that we've talked about it here. They do so many little things. Kurt Cavisto is one heck of a coach, and here it comes. You ready? Brighton is Brighton. If you're a high school athlete with the dream of playing college sports, Lawrence Technological University wants you to recruit yourself. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships are available in all sports, including its newest additions, competitive cheer and dance, e-sports, women's hockey, and men's and women's track and field. Visit LTUathletics.com and recruit yourself. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. There's a feeling every player seeks of being in complete control. Responsive. Instinctual. Here's a break. Shot. Stop. Completely unrelenting. And he scores. Every player chases this feeling, but the best hold on to it.
All right, it's time now for our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. And, Sean, it's a weekly thing with your gloves. These are great gloves, man. I mean, you compare these to the gloves that like that you had when you were younger and everything. Oh, my goodness gracious. You feel like a knight or something. Right? And what about the helmet, too? Oh, it's outstanding. I mean, that's the thing. You know, Warriors got you covered. And I say this each and every week. I mean, support those who support us and support the game. So, big shout out to Warrior. And when you're looking for gear, go check out Warrior. All right, our online vote will end on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Our top 10 will stay the same, Sean. Yeah, you know, and John, the difficult part comes now because, I mean, obviously we're biased, but you have 10 incredibly deserving names on there. And what we have to do is we have to whittle it down to four. Now, again, as we've been saying, the online winner, guess what? You're automatically in the final four. Picking the next three by our criteria that's the difficult part and that's when we all start texting each other and trying to to, to get things uh, whittled down and everything it's it, it's an arduous process and again i think that's a testament to just the great players in this state remember you can catch your vote at statechampsnetwork.com and a reminder that the voting will end on wednesday at 6 p.m and we're going to be announcing our final four on thursday before the semifinal. This is the segment of the show that we get to talk to one of the great coaches all around the great state of Michigan here on Hockey Time and uh, a guy that's won a couple championships in a row and he's in a position again, he and his Heartland Club to try to make it three in a row is kindly joining us right now. Let's welcome him in, the head coach at Heartland, Rick Gadwin. Rick, always a pleasure to talk to you, my friend. How are you? John, doing well. How are you? Tremendous. You know, I, I think when you talk about this season and where you guys are at, you probably have to start a year ago at this time. I mean, you guys, as I mentioned, back-to-back -back champions in, in the tough Division II ranks. It, it's such a hard thing to get to USA Hockey Arena. You guys got there last year. Tell us about it from your perspective. You're there on Thursday, the day that everything kind of happened. What was that experience like for you and your club? Yeah, we've, we had to run over this story quite a bit in the past year. Um, we were li literally on the bus uh, on the way to our, our Final Four game when, you know, when we got the unfortunate news. And, um, you know, obviously uh, the, the emotions that, that our team, players, coaches, families, uh, you know, went through with, with that negative news was awful. And it's honestly all the way a, a year later and yep we're in a great opportunity but like we've been seeing around the state as of late we take every day as a blessing because we just don't know what's going to happen you know rick it's, it's amazing in in so many different ways you hear coaches say they wanted to turn the page from last year this is a brand new year how has that been for you obviously some new faces and and it's unfortunate for the kids that were seniors last year your heart will always go out to them, but how has that been? Has this been a continuation of last year? Or did you guys just decide, hey, new year, new opportunity? I feel like dating back 10 years, every year feels like a continuation as a coach and uh, with our program and the way we go about things at Heartland. So um, that part of it is a definite continuation. With that being said, like my heart still goes out every day for our seniors that, that lost a shot at a title. Um, so you think about them a little bit more than you would maybe maybe in the past. So, um, but yeah, with that being said, every year there are new opportunities. We do take that, uh, you know, with the, with the grain of salt, so to speak. And, and we're looking forward to this opportunity we have right now. You talk about continuation for ten years, and I, I'm I'm going to make a confession right now. And I know I've told you this before. I'm apt to use a term called the usual suspects. Okay. And, and how teams work really hard to, to become one of the usual suspects. I consider you guys patient zero. I, I mean, seriously, you know, talk about how that's been over the last 10 years because, you know, you were always the team. Everybody knew Ricky Gad was got a good team, okay? They, they've got a really good team. They're capable of knocking anybody off. But it's been a climb to get to the top. How do you see it? Yeah, you know what? Ten, ten years ago, uh, to tell you the short version, Heartland almost got rid of their hockey program. We were in there are some penalty troubles and, and different things in our squad that happened, you know, year over year. And so the first job just coming in was just creating that program and one that can be respected. And, and that starts with our people. And 
from the coaches all the way down through the players. But any coach is lying to you if they try to tell you that it's all on the coaching and the program. What you need to be successful is talent. And we've had that. Talent comes in year in, year out. You know, we live and die by our players. And uh, they've done a great job of executing our plan and, and what we want to do as a program. But all the credit, honestly, it goes to the players and what they've been able to do. Rick Gadwell kindly joining us here, Coach's Corner on State Champs. Uh, Rick, with that being said, I, I'm sure you've had an up-close and personal look and, and, and your players have had to experience this. You've had the target on you for a while now. You you really have. I mean, this is, I think it's safe to say this is the fourth straight year that these kids know every night there's a mark on their back. How, how have they handled that? Yeah, uh, pretty well. I mean, you know, we, we have our hiccups. Obviously, we've had some this year, but the end of the day it's a hockey game and and we all know anything can happen but uh you you know what this game is all about life experiences and 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 learning and and getting more prepared for what comes next uh so having that that added pressure you know being one of the few teams that i would say are on top of the mountain it's cool uh you know we'll take that pressure because it's a chance for all of us to get better every day and, and be able to be able to play with that that type of pressure Let's talk about this team, and, and obviously the last chapter hasn't been written yet, but you want to talk about a difficult season in every way, shape, and form. It was, are we going to go? Yeah, we're going to go. No, we're not. Yes, we are. And, and then it was everything that really this sprint has, has, has been. What's this experience been like for you and this team, this 2020, I should say 2021 team? I was about to say 2020, 2021. Now this is strictly a 2021 team. Yeah, one like one like none under for sure. This is uh, this is by far the most challenging season I've had personally as a coach, and, and it's it's not just the limited practices, uh, you know, and on ice and, and the gauntlet of games to get in a, a tight window, but it's all the off the ice, uh, you know, protocols that you have to follow in, in communication. <laughs> I I uh, I've probably sent more emails this year than I have in ten years coaching. That's for sure. Uh, definitely a lot more phone calls, a little bit tighter with our AD. Uh, it's just, it, it's challenging is, is the word to, to use, but I mean, at the end of the day, I think we'll all be better for it. You know, again, just like, uh, you know, when you have everyone coming at you, giving you their best game every night, you know, they're coming at us too with all the off the ice stuff with, with COVID and everything that's happened this year. So at the end of the day, you know, I truly feel we'll all be better for this because we're going to be able to put up with stuff and fight through it. and again get better every day you know i'll, I'll never forget a couple of years ago when we came out to to give one of your fine players the uh, player of the year award I, I was talking to you in the parking lot at heartland high school and I, I don't know if you remember this but you 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 looked around for a second and then you said take a big deep breath sean this is god's country and and there's a heartland pride there is i mean you've got the heartland pride i i, I know as a guy that's been there and and now coaching the team talk about what the eagles mean to your community oh i mean and it's not just our hockey program it, it, look at just look at our athletics program alone girls basketball team is one of the best in the state wrestling is one of the best in the state that's right now just in the winter boys basketball had a heck of a season our athletics program has been on the rise the last 10 years um you know there's there's a handful of state championships in the school and now we're kind of looking down that tunnel some of the sports might have an opportunity to get that done talk about your opponent uh, it got a big one coming up against byron center and you know in 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 i guess normal years rick I would see you or perhaps one of the the, the assistant coaches uh, at a, at a game when we got a chance to see Byron Center at the showcase or wherever it may be. A little different this year. How do you prepare for a team like this? I mean, which again, hey, give them full marks. I mean, to go unbeaten at this level is something else. How do you prepare for a game like that? Start with this, Coach Keyworth at Byron Center. And myself, uh, we're good buddies, and I've known each other for a long time, and. Uh, I just want to put that out here just so everybody knows. I actually coached Coach Keyworth one year, my first year out of college. So just so everybody awesome. knows that. Awesome. So anything he's ever learned, he learned from myself. Um, <laughs> all jokes all jokes aside, he's done a phenomenal job at Byron Center. And we've talked to each other about our teams. We know each other's players. Uh, we're both involved with, in the fall with, with MHA and, and where we both seen and coached both uh, players from both teams. So uh, we're both well aware of each other. Uh, and then you add in all the 
the film this year, it's pretty easily accessible to grab game film on teams uh, this season. So they've watched us, we've watched them, and I think we both have a pretty good idea what one another brings. Outstanding. Well, we're looking forward to it. I think that's one of the games we talked about it when the playoffs start. You put a big circle around that one. Unbeaten Byron Center and, of course, the back-to-back champions from Heartland. Uh, Ricky, appreciate everything you do. I, you, you know this. I have no problem saying this. You're one of my favorite guys. And because you like smoked meat, that might have something to do with it. So uh, I'll get that out there as well. But, hey, continue to su- success to you, my friend, and really appreciate you joining us. Hey, thank you guys, and 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 I say it every time we talk to. But uh, there aren't enough words to 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 say to thank you and and John and and everyone and all the work you guys do. And I really saw it firsthand too when when you actually were able to make it out to that Heartland Howell game, and just the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and the countless hours of of work that you put in for essentially you know nothing. So uh, we really do. I can say it. You can't. <laughs> I, uh, I I really do appreciate everything you guys do. We all do. And uh, we wouldn't be where we are today without you guys, honestly. So thank you. Great stuff. Rick Gadwa, the head coach at Heartland. Continued success to you guys. Thanks for joining us on Coach's Corner. All right, let's go to Division Two, And in our Alta Equipment Company main event, it was a Division Two regional final between Livonia Stevenson and Novi. Novi came out on top 2-1. to one. It was a lot like last year's game, except, you know, obviously it didn't go three overtimes, and Novi found a way to win. And, John, we said it from the first show this year. uh, If you sleep on Novi, you're going to be mistaken. You and I both took Novi in that game. It was a heck of a hockey game. It really was. I mean, tip of the cap to the Spartans. Uh, They had a tremendous season, but in the end, Austin Muirhead was Austin Muirhead. uh, But you have to give it up to Austin, who scored both those goals. And they had one of the greatest celebrations on ice as well. So I appreciate the shout-out, boys. Hey, Sean Belize, I I love you, Sean. Sean. Sean, You're You're my idol. Right here. And Novi will take on the 14-time state champs in Trenton in the Division II Hockey Quarterfinal. Oh, baby, what a what a big one this is. Hey, listen, we told you Trenton was going to be fine, okay? Here they are, another opportunity to punch their way uh, to the USA Hockey Arena. This should be a dandy, John. Two goalies that we've seen up close and personal that you know are capable of hypnotizing the opposition. You know, you've you've got guys that can score. Uh, you got to like Preston's game in Trenton. Obviously, I think you know what we think about Isaac and and Balcony in Novi. This should be a dandy at the disc. And in the next Division Two quarterfinal, we have Brother Rice taking on Port Huron Northern. Well, you know what? Port here in Northern has been a great story all year. They're going to have to have a heck of a game, though. You know, John, I I think I've been consistent about this. I think there are two teams in Division II. I think we're a little bit ahead of everybody else, and it's Heartland and it's Brother Rice. Port here in Northern has a little magic going for them right now. You know, can, can they pull off an upset? What an upset it would be. At least there's familiarity there, right? So let's see if that counts for something. You talked to Coach Gadwell earlier in our Coach's Corner. Heartland's going to be playing Byron Center. This is the game that we've been circling for a few weeks now. It's now going to happen on Tuesday night. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, the history between Coach Keyworth and and, and Coach Gadwell, and, uh, you know, I'm really intrigued to see what Byron Center can is, is all about. I, you know, that's no disrespect. I hope you understand what I'm saying, but they're playing the big boy now. I mean, Heartland still is the big boy. I mean, not only by virtue of the fact that, you know, they've won the last two Division Twos, but, you know, I think they've been the best team in Division Two all year long. All right, and we go up north for the game between Marquette and Traverse City Central. Traverse City Central is the first time in school history they won back-to-back regional title. Well, and it's amazing when you look at all the success that Coach Givens has had there. I This is such an intriguing battle to me. You know, I... I've been told by many people that Marquette just comes at you, comes at you. And and Traverse City, again, you know what Coach Givens brings to the table. This is a great matchup. And either one of these teams, in my opinion, John, are capable of knocking off somebody else once they get to the Final Four. So that's what makes a game like that so intriguing. And finally, let's go to Division Three. Calumet, Houghton. It seems like it was like part 30 this year that they played each other, but this time was in the regional final and Calumet won 3-1. to one. By all accounts, just a fantastic game. And, you know, I, I, I saw some people say that, you know, Houghton deserved a, a better fate. But, you know, at the end of the day, 
Uh, Calumet, look, you need your best players to be at their best, and Locus scored a highlight real goal. He really did. It's unfortunate because I'm going to say it again. John, it's almost like you can set your watch to this. I'm going to say this every year. It's a crying shame that so many of those teams from the UP have to be you know, knocked out this way because more often than not, you're talking about two or sometimes three of the best teams in the entire state. But uh, this year, it's been the Copper King start to finish. All right, let's preview the Division Three quarterfinals. And Kelly Met is taking on Alpina. Yeah, what a great story for Alpina. And, you know, it's, it's, I'll, I'll tell you what, I think everybody remembers what they did a couple of years ago. Coach Limbach and, and, and Coach Givens there doing such a tremendous job. It's going to be difficult for them. Make no mistake about it. Calumet, I, I, I'll say it again, John, I think they're the team to beat in Division Three. I really do by that much. Uh, but it's going to be a tough, tough task. And the winner of that game will play the winner of Chelsea and Riverview Gabe Richard, we mentioned earlier that it's going to be our game time live. But talk about that matchup. You know what's crazy about this, John? Here we talked about how this region's so crazy, and you and I nailed this region. These were the two teams that we thought were going to be there, and they were they were there. But listen, Chelsea Chelsea has has been next level. But if I've said it once, I've said it ten thousand times. There has to be something said about a team that is battle tested and and has had some success in the playoffs and and certainly you've seen that out of uh, Riverview Gabriel Richard we're going to have a dandy on Wednesday night hopefully you guys can tune in and in the other side of the bracket we have Flint Powers taking on Grand Rapids Catholic Central tremendous respect for Travis Perry he's always uh, done a great job this year you know he he played tough games this team is a darn good team make no mistake about that and let's not forget the other guy Mike Slobodnik is a guy that over the years has had so much success and and so many good runs that that should be a dandy i like powers but i'm not going to count out mike slobodnik either let's talk about another dandy Ooh. cranbrook taking on uad jesuit two mihl powers going at it in the quarter yeah and more familiarity like division two you get that in, in division three um a lot of people thought that this was destiny that these these two teams got here um you know it's interesting because i i think you've got you know for Cranbrook, what everybody talks about, their goaltending, and obviously one of the best defensemen, if not the best, in the state in, in Stenman. And, and then you've got Marquette and UAD and Nowak in net. I mean, this is a fantastic matchup, John. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, but I'm going with Cubbies. All right, Sean, lastly here on Hockey Time. It seems like we're going to have the end of the season. We're going to have to finish. Well, you know what? That's all everybody wanted. And, and, you know, all year long, all the work that the coaches did, the players did, and everything, it, it led to this. And and this is why you you made so many sacrifices. And this is why you were willing to show that you were willing to do anything to be in this position. And so, thankfully, it looks like this is going to happen this weekend. And thank the Lord for that. We got some shocking news here on Hockey Time. Sean's not going to be at the finals. I'm not going to be here. Sorry. I, I apologize to everybody. No, you know what? We, and tell them where you're going. Well, we had we had a trip that was, like so many other people, delayed last year. And so when it was time to make the trip again, you know, at the time, the finals were scheduled for mid-March. And so we made our trip in late March. And I apologize. It's the first finals I'm going to miss and. I don't know, like 70 years or something like that. I think the last one I missed was 70 years ago. No, going down to the Keys with my family. So um, look, looking forward to that. But, uh, John, you can bet your bottom dollar that the only guy that will be on his phone in Key West watching or listening to the Michigan High School Finals will be this guy. And that guy right There's no, listen to me. I'm, I'm telling you, if you want to know where I am on Thursday or Friday or Saturday – I'll be on the beat someplace watching the games online or listening, whatever the case may be. Our buddy Jimmy Young does a great job of broadcasts uh, up north. So, yeah, no no doubt about it. Or they should have just had, you know, the MHSA should have just had you, you know, like have a setup. You could have done the play-by-play there like they do at those, you know, the C, you know, the college basketball games. From my good? tiki bar? Yeah, you could have yeah, just broadcast a game. They could have found a way to. Yeah, we, we should have done something like that. But, no, you know, it, it, hey, listen, it, it. I wish I was there, but. This has been a strange year for everybody, and uh, yeah, so we're at least we. Good news, we get to take a, a family trip together. The bad news, uh, I'm gonna miss the finals. 
But, Sean, have a great time. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. All right. So that's it for another edition of State Champs Hockey Time. Next week, we'll have our State Champs at the State Finals Hockey Finals edition. We'll recap all the State Finals, even the highlights of the girls' hockey State Finals. Sean? Outstanding. Such a great product. Uh, Anything that helps the game, I'm all in. I'll see you at the rink. I'll see you at the beach. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University. LTU offers over two dozen varsity sports for men and women, along with several dozen world-class undergraduate programs. Athletic and academic scholarships are available in all sports. Visit LTUathletics.com and recruit yourself. Also presented by Alta Equipment Company. Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. Detroit Medical Center Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine. Do you have a sports injury or are you just looking to take your game to the next level? Go where the pros go. Visit dmc.org slash game changers. The Detroit Athletic Club Foundation. Warrior Hockey and the new Covert QRE 10 stick. Elite puck feel and quick release for players of all ages. The Warrior Covert QRE 10 stick. There's no feeling like it.